can you tell me, um, I suppose, a typical day when you go into work in the morning, what, what, how you would walk through your day in effect? Yeah, a typical day for me would be starting at about, I'd be in the hotel from about 8 to between 8 and 8.30. Okay. Um, we do, in Capella, we do a line-up every morning, which would be um, whereby each department would go through the philosophies, a certain service standard every day. There's 24 service standards. Okay. So we They're would... Capella? Capella is... Or in, yeah, okay. it's, it's pure. It's, um, it's, it's the reason that we're in the company. Like, the, our objective is right through to... Um, yeah, to the vision and everything like that. So um, it covers everything from discretion with guests right through to the vision statement. Very so good. every day we would discuss one of that, okay. one of them, and it would be the same one throughout the whole hotel. So um, we do line up, would take about 15 to 20 minutes in the morning. Okay. So we do that about 9, 8.45 we do that. Till 9. With, yeah, till about 9. So then literally if I have groups in house, I'd be upstairs making sure that everything went okay with my groups. Right. Um, meeting and greeting, uh, if there's conferences, meeting and greeting conference organisers, showing them r their rooms, giving them a quick orientation around the hotel as to where they will be dining, where the restrooms are located. And then um, if I have a group leaving, then touch and base with the organiser, doing the fun farewell with them as well. Administration? A Admi word that we love so the much. Administration, just <laughs> making sure that the, the prices <laughs> bill is actually right and correct and that mm -hmm. everything is, is tallied up at the end. It's so tedious. It is, yeah, it's tedious, but it, it's, 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 it's the reason we're there. It's, it's, we're a profit-making organisation at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. So then um, literally I'll be back downstairs then, answering emails, um, a lot of the uh, website emails would come through to me, so if it's for myself, then I'd fill it through it out, or if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's something to do with conferences, I deal with our weddings. Okay. So we, we get a good few wedding inquiries through, so we'd... So you get a good bit of exposure between the operational, as you said, experience? Oh yeah, exactly, yeah. And the yeah. It's, it, it's the role of catering services, it, it, it has to be clearly defined in that um, mm -hmm. you either take a sales perspective or an operation perspective and um, it would be a bit of both of us I Very do good. at the moment. What are the greatest challenges that you face in that role? The greatest challenges, um, it would be, at the moment I'd say it would be the, the fact of getting business in. And, Given um, it's a new hotel. Yeah, it's a new hotel, it's a new brand as well, so it's, uh, it's not quite well known. Um, so getting people in, once we get them in, then it's fine. People understand us, even if it's in for a quick show around, a cup mm -hmm. of coffee. But once we get them in, we can show them, they fully understand what we're about. Mm -hmm. And we are different, we're completely different to any hotel in Ireland. Um, as we say to people, just come down and experience us and you'll understand. And mm -hmm. then once they do, they fully do understand us. What are the greatest rewards for you, Paul? Greatest rewards is when um, a group leaves. Okay. And literally, and you get the email the next day just saying thank you very much. And literally, planning everything right down to their their, their details. And to see it all come to fruition, I think there's a lot. Exactly. Time. Yeah, we deal with a lot, lot of agents at the moment, and um, I mean the, the level of service we would provide, we would act as a DMC as opposed to them getting through, getting a local DMC on site as well. So that that's we're basically we, we would take that role as as a DMC for people. Oh, um, even our concierge facilities, we don't have a concierge facilities as such. We've um, personal assistants who would actually, for the individual guests, would contact them prior to arrival and plan everything for them. So, like, we would literally, for groups as well, we would do the same thing. Oh, we, we would. Tell me, I suppose, um, what is the one of the things that you admire most about the current hotel and the capella that you're working for? The thing that I admire most would be that everybody is at the same... The same, on the same philosophies, right. it's all guest orientated. Okay. So in a lot of hotels you might, um, you might have people that wouldn't be guest orientated, that would literally be money orientated, or, but everybody is purely guest orientated. There's a lot of empowerment to employ direct line employees as well to fix problems as, if they arise, or even to, they're empowered to come up with ways to delight and to kind of um, wow. wow guests, mm. exactly, yeah. Very good. Can I ask the same question, I suppose, about, you know, your hotel school? Because obviously I think people going or considering young hotels that are watching this, mm. thinking about hospitality as a career, you know, finding the guidance to, to choose the right hotel school. Um, uh, what would you have admired most about Shannon College? Um, Shannon, it's a very small college. Okay. So there's a very family atmosphere there. Um, there's a lot of guidance in there. You mm -hmm. really do get good colleagues and friends and, you know, potentially work colleagues as well out of there. Um, I mean, my current role at the moment, I'm working with two people that were literally directly 
either in a class with me or a couple of classes ahead of me. So you, you get to build relationships in a smaller college. So coming from a fine town like Abbey Field Paul, can you tell me, I suppose, why you initially chose the hospitality industry? Well, uh, having worked in it for part-time and full-time for summer work um, was something that just interested me. Was um, I, there was, uh, I was considering IT or something like that, but like you'd miss the whole people connection. It's, it's that bit that I like, meeting new people and then just, just getting to know new people. Oh, good. Can you tell me, I suppose, speaking of people, I think there's often people that we come across in our career that we find instrumental motivators and visionary people. Is there anyone that sticks out in your mind from your experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, there is a couple. I mean, mm -hmm. um, working with Jerry Doyle, there would have been um, our CEO at the time, Pat McCann. Okay. Quite inspirational. Um, a man, if one walked into a room, you, you could see respect straight away from him. Okay. And then recently, um, with the opening of Capella, we met Horst Schulze, who was the, um, he's a, he's the CEO of... Uh, of our of West Paces hotels, but he also is the former CEO of Ritz Carlton. You know, he took Ritz Carlton from two hotels to where it is now, and just to see him and his, I mean, at the end of the day, this guy he doesn't have any collateral as such. Right. He, he literally he was going to, um, going to incentive fairs by himself prior to having a team with him and just literally sitting at a stand himself selling a vision. He told you the story, obviously, as to how. Yeah, as to how I mean, literally, he's. Seven, about 70 years of age and he's, right. he's off his own cuff he's just taken a whole leap of actually just starting up a whole new hotel chain and it's not it's not any hotel chain that he's going to open he just wants it to be the best hotel chain in the world he wants quite the minute you think of quality he wants people to think of of um capella capella hotels or west Peace hotels very good so i mean what qualities do you think drove that man to to take it from two hotels to what it is today? Um, he was just consistent with his vision. I mean, um, okay. when he was when he was in Swi he did his lot of um, his training in Switzerland, okay. in um, in Lausanne actually. And he one of his one of his essays that he still quotes today is that um, we're ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So his his passion is that the people themselves in the industry. Our, our, our people, you know, we are ladies and gentlemen. We are, um, it's, it's, it's all down to the people. There is a, it's even with ourselves at the moment, it's a very hard selection process. We do a thing called Talent Plus, right. which is, and it's been, it's been geared, it's a, it's a, um, a psychometric test that's literally, it, it makes you in line with the company's objectives. I mean, like we, there's about a 60 to 70% failure rate on that. So recruitment costs are very high, but then again, once you get the right person, they say, I mean, like our, our labour turnover is very, very small. So the Talent Plus basically is the selection process that yeah, they is. would use? It is, yeah. Okay. yeah. Obviously, there's the whole filtering out prior to the, prior to being getting the Talent Plus. Okay. But um, yeah, it is. It's our, it's our recruitment tool. So obviously it's helpful for achievement purposes when it everyone's is. working along yeah. the same vision. You have everyone along the same vision and you have um, the most talented people working for you then. Right, sure. Well, it is about the talent. It is. That's it's why we're here, Paul. <laughs>